Over the last few months, I've experimented with making clabber all sorts of ways. At different times, I've had a whole row of jars of milk on my counter because I'm trying different things. I think sometimes there's a lot of little tricks that people do and they don't say them because they don't think it's important. And I think you have to say every little trick. My name is Jennifer and in this video, I'm going to share everything that I can and hopefully this will work for you when you make your clabber. This stuff, which is milk that has been left to sit out at room temperature, boop, da -da -da -da, smells amazing like butter. That's the cream. And then here is the clabber. Thick, gorgeous lusciousness. You can use this in place of buttermilk and baking or salad dressings or put it into smoothies. But the most important thing, to me anyway, is that you can use it to culture your cheeses. All cheeses, mesophilic, thermophilic. Just use your own milk that is set up into clabber and forget about freeze-dried cultures. Well, more or less. I still use them sometimes. I'd heard that the iodine that's used to clean a cow's teats prior to milking may interfere with clabbering, so I did side-by-side -side experiments, comparing milk that my husband hand-expressed prior to dipping Emma's teats in iodine versus the milk from our standard milking practice. That's why you see me clabbering two jars of milk in this video. Milk A Pure is the milk without the iodine, and Milk A is just our regular raw milk. They both behaved about the same though, so I didn't bother differentiating them throughout the video. Oh look, it's set up. This is the regular stuff that had iodine. This is the stuff that was gotten before and they both look the same. I'm gonna put them into new jars now. It actually smells really good for the first time. You can see the cream is on top and then underneath it is like smooth like that. You have to use raw milk to start a clabber, but once it is clabbered the first time, you can maintain it with store-bought pasteurized milk. Give it a wee shake, unscrew the lid, keep it loose and set it back. Now these, I will actually probably feed to the pigs today just because it's the first time, even though it smells good and I could put it into pancakes and it'd be totally fine. Is this set? Oh, it's a little loose, or is it? Well, it's not firm, firm solid. And this one, eh, I'm gonna say they're a little loose. I'm gonna let these keep going till bedtime. Just make them get a little bit firmer. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty darn solid. This one's more loose, but I did shake it this afternoon. I've experimented with shaking the clabber feed in to see if that works, or I've also tested with just blopping it into the jar and then pouring in milk and not shaking it and seeing if that works. It's better to shake it in. Time for pancakes. I forgot to film last night, so let's recap. La, la. I have heard some cheesemakers say that they only use clabber when it's still relatively young, like generations four through 12 or so, and then they start a new batch of clabber. But I've heard other cheesemakers say that they keep the same clabber going for forever and make their cheese. I see no reason at this point to change. As long as the clabber is smelling sweet and buttery, I'm going to keep using it. You can store clabber in the refrigerator, but if you're using it for cheese making, make sure to use it within two to four days. I've experimented with restarting a refrigerated clabber to see if I could get it going again again, but it didn't work too well. It always smelled a bit off and I didn't want to risk damaging a cheese. I'm getting a jar of this started for tomorrow. So this goes in the fridge and for backup if I need it and this gets set up on the counter. When you're doing cheese with this, it's one quarter cup of clabber per gallon of milk across the board. And there you have it. That's everything that I know about making clabber. If you'd like to use clabber for cheese making, I am going to recommend that you watch this video next. It's for a Gouda style cheese that I cultured with clabber and it's a special one. Nutty and buttery and absolutely delicious. I really think you're gonna love it. <laughs>